Hello and good afternoon. This is Larry Tentarelli of the Blue Chip Daily Trend Report with today's Your Daily Five for StockCharts.com. And I'm going to share with you today five ideas that are on my screen that I thought that you might find of interest. So my contact information, I'm Larry Tentarelli. I'm the editor, publisher, and founder of BlueChipDaily.com. That's our web address. You can also find me on Twitter at LMT978. So five charts of interest. We're going to start, obviously, with the main chart, which is the S&P 500. And I was last on about a week or two ago, and we took a look at the S&P 500 just coming off the lows, and I highlighted some charts that showed that there were some fairly oversold readings in the markets as far as the put-call ratio, uh, the the VIX, and the NYSE McClellan oscillator. So where we've got with the S&P right now, and there's a lot of key levels that are on my screen, but I, I want to start with the S&P because in order for, for most of the ideas to work, I want to see some stability and upside follow through in the market. So S&P, we can take a look and you can see my cursor. So it, it put in a near-term bottom last week, 42.22. It had a very high volume reversal thing. You can see it was a very high volume bar. So that was a bullish constructive reversal. Now, the first thing that I wanted to see after that is we want to see the prior low. So we'll call that 42.22. We want to see that either not get tested whatsoever, or if it does get tested, we want to see that level and hold uh, and move higher because the one of the first steps for a downtrend to stop is for price to stop making new lows. So a high volume reversal. Then there was three choppy days afterwards where the S&P tested lower, but it, it did not test that Monday low. And then obviously coming out of last Friday, we had a pretty strong recovery move higher. So there's a couple of levels that I'm focused on here. So in the near term, 4408 would be a 50% retracement of the recovery move from 4222 to 4595. So to keep it simple, I'm gonna keep my chart at 4400. So there, there is some weakness today in the S&P, but as I speak, it's about 4482. So what I would want to see, if there's any further pullback, or any further downside testing. 4,400 is the first level that I'd wanna see that hold. And then if S&P can start to reclaim the 50 day and 4,650 is my main number overhead, that if the S&P can close over 4,650, then for my time frame, that would negate this downtrend. It would reclaim the 20 day, it would reclaim the 50 day and put us right over here. So 4,650 on the upside, is where I wanna see a close above 4,400 on the downside is where I would like to see uh, no price test below. So now we'll go into four key charts of interest. We're going to start with energy and I've been covering the energy sector on my videos with stockcharts.com since about the middle of last year. This is still my top ranked sector overall in the S&P 500. So there's 11 sectors. Energy is the, it's the cheapest as far as the price to earnings valuation goes. It's also the strongest sector by relative strength. It's also the strongest performance sector in the S&P. Now, obviously it's had a very strong move off the 200 day moving average. Energy has been very strong year to date as 10-year treasury bond yields have broken out. So there, there could be room for some consolidation at some point. And for my time frame, any consolidation over this rising 50-day moving average keeps this longer-term uptrend intact. And I think for the most part, the sector across the board has a lot of strong charts. Chevron, uh, Devon Energy, Exxon, Halliburton, BP, EOG. So the entire sector overall, I've liked it on the way up. And if there's any near-term consolidation, I think that would offer a buying opportunity in the energy sector. Uh, chart number two in the ideas, Microsoft. So we've taken a look at Microsoft before. Now, I will say that the tech sector 
has been a, a little bit weaker, especially triple Q. Triple Q has been trading below the 200-day moving average. So Microsoft is in a range right now. And it started to roll over and it came down pretty sharply with large cap tech. So the interesting thing, and we hear a lot about the Federal Reserve uh, raising rates, tightening, things like that. So the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell came out November 30th. He said that the Fed is going to start to accelerate their tightening process. And after a small pullback, Microsoft actually made a new high after that. But it was the breakout in bond yields that really took down uh, a lot of stocks in the tech sector. So what I'd like to see for Microsoft, it's in a range a lot like the S&P 500. So on any pullbacks, I'd want to see this 290 level hold. And I'd really like to see it on the other side of 316. Now, if it closes over 325, a lot like that 4650 level in the S&P. If Microsoft can get over 325 on a closing basis, then for my time frame, that would neutralize this entire downtrend. We'd, we'd have a few higher highs and back over this declining 50-day moving average. So I'm constructive on it here. I do think it's probably maybe a, a 60-40 proposition from here. I'd want to see it hold over 290. And over 325, I think, would give us uh, more of an all-clear signal. But that's high on my watch list. Next chart is Charles Schwab in the financial sector. Now, we can see the, the Schwab chart. And I've got a position here in Schwab. But we can see that the, the Schwab chart is in a very, very strong uptrend. And a couple key things. The Federal Reserve shifted gears, as we spoke about, on November 30th. And we can see that Schwab for whatever reason, since the Fed came out and said that they're going to start to tighten, Schwab's been in a very, very strong uptrend. When the year started, bond yields broke out. Schwab broke out with it and then pulled back with the recent market pullback. But Schwab has been a relative strength leader. It held the rising 50-day moving average on this pullback. And we can see, although the S&P tested below the 200-day moving average, the, the market only took Schwab down to this rising 50 days. So this is a performance leader year to date. It's also a relative strength leader. And it's a very strong uptrend on the chart in the financial sector, which has also been very strong. And then the last chart that we'll take a look at, this is a little bit more of a recovery idea chart. And the reason that I say that is it has not cleared the 200-day moving average as of yet. But it does have a lot of technically bullish signs on the chart. So we'll take a look. This is Vale do Rio Doce. If I said that correctly, I hope that I did. They are in the, they're a, a global leader, $79 billion market cap. And they are in the, the general metals and mining business. So they're not focused on just steel, gold, copper. They pull everything out of the ground. And we can see a couple things that are very, very constructive about this chart. So it has not closed over the 200 day as of yet, but we can see a couple of things. It was in a very, very strong downtrend for whatever reason from July until November, the stock dropped almost 50%, but this is when it started the recovery move. So there was a couple key steps in this recovery process. So it started to recover the 20 day, and then the 20-day moving average turned up. So this is the first bullish signal. Then it closed over the 50-day. So that's another bullish signal. 20-day crossed the 50-day to the upside. That's the third. Now the 50-day has started to turn higher. And we can see that volley, for the most part, has been riding this 20-day moving average all the way up. Uh, once again, Fed shifted gears end of November. And this stock has been pretty much straight up since the Fed announced their tight, their new tightening policy. And it's been pretty much straight up since bond yields have broken out. So I think that the chart is constructive right here. I do not have a position as of yet, but it's very possible uh, that I might by the end of today or on Monday. I want to see what the overall markets do. But a couple key things, as long as this uptrend holds over the rising 50-day moving average, 
then I would continue to give this stock the benefit of the doubt to the upside. It looks like it, it trades at single digit PE. Uh, looks like it's got a very high dividend yield. So this should always be verified because information sources vary. But in either case, lower PE, higher dividend, and, and that's what's been working very well in this market. But a very, very strong chart over the rising 20 day, over the rising 50 day. And we can see at 1645, which it tested yesterday, that looks like it's about four or five month highs on the chart. So that's it for, for today's video for five charts that are high on my focus screen. And I hope that everyone has a great weekend. Thank you. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.